All right, folks, today we are doing a Atlanta Falcons 2021 seven-round mock draft. This is all based on last Monday's first-round mock. So our first-round pick is already done. You should already know what it is. If you don't, check out the link right over here somewhere. Um, that'll take you to it. You can kind of run through that first-round mock, get a little bit of my thought process on it, et cetera, et cetera, although this one's pretty straightforward. Still, you should go do that for me. Otherwise, let's get started. With the eighth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. Again, if you want a little bit more, go check out that first round mock. But the bottom line is we need a lot of help here. Um, and I just I just want to get better. I don't. It, it's similar to teams like the Lions where you're trying to figure out what's the best overall direction to go. And I think you can kind of get hung up in that. Um, there's a lot of different things you could do. But... I mean, it's just, it's a premium position, and no matter what we do, no matter the coach, no matter the defensive coordinator, no matter the GM, any of that stuff, doesn't matter the quarterback, got to have a pass rusher. Doesn't matter the scheme, doesn't matter any of that stuff, we got to have a pass rusher. Gregory Russo isn't like the elite guys that we've seen coming out, like Bosa, like um, Chase Young, but he's got the attributes. He's got the build. He's just a little bit more raw and, and just doesn't seem to quite get over that hump. So there's going to be a little bit of work to do, but it's not a deep defensive class. It's certainly not a deep edge class. We're getting the best one in this class, so it is what it is. But uh, he should be a great player for us. With the 39th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Travis Etienne, running back Clemson. Now, I know a lot of people are saying he's never going to make it this far. I did the first round mock, right? And I had the Panthers go first. Uh, the next time around, granted, it's the, you know there's five teams that probably could have, would have, should have taken him, whatever. Doesn't matter. Point is, he was available. A lot of that has to do with fans typically freak out when you take a first round running back. They hate it. They don't care about value. They just care about need. And and for most teams, running back isn't your number one need. And that's probably true for the Falcons as well. But this is a top 15 prospect that just fell to you at 39. So I just I don't want to hear the complaining. I'll be completely honest. The Todd Gurley experiment has been an absolute failure. We do need to get better at running back. We're getting the best running back in this class, which is debatable. But Travis Etienne has consistently been the top guy on the board, and it really hasn't even been close. Um, again, Etienne is probably ranked 15th overall. I got Najee Harris on my board at 31. So um, to each his own, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's a need. Unbelievable value. Great football player. Really good runner. And one of the other exciting things about him is that he's actually improved quite a bit as a receiver. So, I mean, he's just a, he's an everything kind of guy. Um Again, I don't know exactly the direction, but if you can't figure out how to make Travis Etienne make your team better, you just suck. That's all there is to it. With the 74th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Richard LeCount, or Richard LeCount, I don't know, safety out of Georgia. Look, I, I just I think I'm ready to cut bait on Oliver. I'm just kind of over it. Um, Allen isn't really that much better in terms of his production. Um, Neil is decent, but at, at the very least, he still needs help. And so even if we really like Neil, and I do like Neil, Keanu Neal, uh, I just we got to do better. So we're going to go out with Richard LeCount, safety out of Georgia. The 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 good and bad thing about him is number one, I guess the bad would be he's not overly dynamic in terms of what you see on tape or whatever and flying around. He doesn't have like elite range or speed or any of that kind of stuff. He just does a good job. You know, he just, he does his job. He's assignment sure, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you just look at this year statistically, which isn't that bad, he's only played five games. He's got three picks and a pass breakup. So again, he just, he does his job. He's got good PFF grades for, for the last three years in terms of coverage, you know, run defense is kind of iffy, but again, you're not going to get Earl Thomas out of him, but if you can just get a solid does his job safety, that's going to be a compliment. I think it's a great pickup. So we're going to go with Richard LeCount at pick 74. With the 105th overall pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Kenny Yaboa tight end out of Ole Miss. Um, I really thought Hayden Hurst was going to be a good pickup for you guys. It doesn't seem like it's working out all that well. Even if we like Hayden Hurst to get it better, you know, we can do the whole routine about, well, next year, 
will be a better game. Whatever. The guy's already 28, and 2021 is his last year. I don't see any scenario in which he is the long-term solution to your team. I'm looking for somebody that can be the long-term solution at tight end to your team. Ole Miss, obviously, a very explosive kind of offense. Six foot four, 240. He fits that prototype. He's not the 260-pound old-school blocking kind of guy. He is a receiving uh, 6'4", 240 kind of tight end. He's got 524 yards and six touchdowns. This year already six touchdowns is pretty impressive when you factor in what has it been, eight, nine games that he's played. Um, in terms of his blocking ability, again, it's what you would expect from him. It's somewhat subpar, but that's not why we're drafting him. And, and when you get this laid into it, the fact that he doesn't block, as weird as it sounds, is almost a benefit because it, otherwise it's like why is such a talented receiver falling this far? It's because he's not perfectly well-rounded. He's just a receiver, and that's all we're going for. Um, we're going to really start to spark this offense. Again, Travis Etienne and Kenny Yaboa. It's pretty exciting. With the 136th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Joshua Kando, edge rusher, Florida State. I know we already got an edge rusher. I just, first of all, I mean, it's, it's a value thing. He was just sitting there. Uh, six foot seven, 265 pounds. I just, I just want to get better. That's it. And, and so, we're, yeah, we're drafting two guys at the same position because I just want to get better. He does have 20. He doesn't have any sacks, which a lot of people are going to look at and say he's trash. But he's got 21 pressures on 208 attempts. That's over 10 percent. That's solid. That's fine. I mean, college football it's not great, but um, it's good enough. So it's it's deceptively low stats if you look at it just from a sack standpoint. But he does have two hits and 19 hurries. Just hasn't done a hasn't been very successful at kind of closing the deal, I guess. But again, at six foot seven, he's got some unique tools. He's got obviously going to have extremely long arms, be able to keep those offensive tackles' arms off of you. Hopefully, somebody in Atlanta can teach him a couple things to get him after the quarterback, and hopefully get some guys down. Um, again, one of the things that is a bad but good thing, I guess, would be the fact that he's not great at anything other than pass rush. I mean, his run defense and his tackling is, is kind of subpar, not a very fundamentally sound kind of guy. But that kind of increases my belief that maybe he the one thing he can do is get after the quarterback, and I think I'm okay with that at this point, even if he's a situational guy, even if he's just like a, a third and 15 pass rusher. Just put him out. I don't care. What are we in, the sixth round, fifth round? So what? So big, massive edge rusher in Joshua Kando out of Florida State in the fifth round. With the 167th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Marco Wilson, cornerback, Florida. I think we might have something with A.J. Terrell. I think he's a good football player. I think, you know, there's plenty there, but my concern is behind him. Now, again, we're in the sixth round, so it's kind of, you know, we're not really looking for that premier player. I'm looking for depth and competition behind A.J. Terrell. That's basically it, right? We've got our number one guy. After that, it's kind of up in the air. I mean, I know you can list off, no, our number two is this guy, three is this guy, four is this. I get that. But I'm looking for better competition because I don't actually like it, and they're not locked in, right? Whoever your number two is in your mind, it doesn't have to be locked in because he's not good enough to have won a locked-in role. Again, I don't know if Marco Wilson's going to come in and steal the number two job, but number three, number four, whatever – Again, we, we just we're, we're always looking for competition and depth, and we're going to get that with Marco Wilson at an extremely important position, which is far from completely established. With the 202nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Reggie Roberson, wide receiver, SMU. I know wide receiver isn't top of anybody's list, but Julio Jones is getting older, and we have a ton of 2021 and 2022 free agents uh, that are coming up. So I, I just, again, I, I want to keep that going, right? I don't want to get to the point where it's like, okay, now Julio's gone, and now these guys are all gone, so now we have to go out and get somebody. No, 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 no. We got to keep it going. We got to keep it stocked up. And um, again, everything every year is just going like this. You got to have something going like this the other direction. And I like Roberson. He's a, a relatively big dude. He's six foot, but he's 200 pounds. Um, only played four games this year. He's already got 468 yards and five touchdowns. Last year, 803 yards and six touchdowns. This year, he's got 21.3 yards per reception. It's somewhat of a, a massive year for him in terms of st statistics. It's too bad he only played four games because it's been absolutely fantastic. In just his last game against Memphis, which is week five, was obviously a, weird ago, a while ago, 
eight targets, five receptions, 243 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, I mean, just, just an absolutely fantastic game. And, and again, too bad that he didn't have more time. He probably could have gotten a little bit more money and been drafted earlier than the seventh round. He may already, based on what he's done here. we got to see what happens with the boards. But clearly, this is a guy that actually could be a steal, right? We, we don't know all that much. He did have a good year in 2019, um, but he had such a better year in 2020 just based on that small sample size. So, um, you know, again, we're not looking for a guy to come in and be the number one or even number two. We got that figured out. But what about, you know, the year after that? What about number three? What about, you know, whatever? So we're going to keep the wide receivers stocked up. And, uh, I mean, Julio is not going to be, even if he sticks around for a while, he's not going to be performing at a super high elite level forever. So Reggie Roberson in the seventh round, the end. Well, that's going to do it for us, folks. That is a seven-round mock draft for the Atlanta Falcons. I hope you will check out um, tomorrow's episode. We're going to be doing the Miami Dolphins. Friday is the Broncos. Saturday is Washington, and Sunday we're doing the Detroit Lions, and then hopefully by Monday we'll have another first-round mock draft, and we just keep this thing going until we run through all the teams, and then we just start over until the draft happens, and then we do 2022. But uh, I do appreciate you checking it out. I hope you will drop a like on this video. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these episodes. I'm, I'm, I'm on a tear right now, and I, I'm hoping I can keep up this pace. Um, and otherwise, if you have any thoughts, please leave them in the comment section. It's going to help me, especially for Monday's episode with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, if you have any thoughts on needs, don't needs, whatever, anything that I miss, overlooked, whatever, please drop a comment because I'm very receptive. I read all those, and I try to keep it all stored up in my head so I remember for next time. Ideally, by the time the draft comes up, I've got a pretty solid idea of, of what these teams need, and that's going to be based on you hitting up the comment section. So please do that. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.